I bought one of these iPad 2 things um, a few months ago and when I was using Safari and using my forefinger to scroll up and down I noticed that there was this rather lovely textured grey background uh, that Apple are using and I thought that was rather pleasant and so I wanted to try to reproduce that uh, as an exercise in Photoshop and see if it was something that I could produce and uh, therefore use as a background say for websites or something similar. So uh, what I'm going to show you here is a quick way of producing that fleck, that grey fleck texture uh, in layers in Photoshop and then be able to produce that ready for uh, optimized image for, for the web. Okay, so this is what we want, want to end up with uh, using Photoshop with our various layers and I shall start right from scratch with a fresh new document and show you how to build this. So let's go Apple New, let's create a 72 dpi image that's 1440 by 960. Okay. And what we want to produce is a very dark background to begin with. I'm a big fan of dark grey, so let's put in a 3232322 hex number in there and using shift F5 we can fill that background very very quickly like that and now what we want to produce is a layer on top of that and fill that one with white same again shift F5 rapidly fills that with white and our layers at the moment here are all opacity of 100% so we'll work on the one that's at the top and with this now what I want to do is add a filter of noise so I'm going to add noise to that at an amount about 98% at uniform which is absolutely fine under monochromatic so I press OK to that now we want to duplicate this layer and there's a couple of ways we can do that we've got the layer selected right now and I can do Apple J and you can see it just re reproduces that really quickly or I could have click, held, and drag that down to the duplicate um, little icon down at the bottom here. Okay, which is for creating a new layer, but we can create a new layer from another layer. So we've now got two white layers with noise, and to get that lovely uh, texture, we need to be able to add another filter, which is the uh, motion blur. We need to be able to get a vertical and horizontal blur going on. This is why we've got two layers. So let me hide the top layer. We're now looking at the, the middle layer here. So I'm going to go to filter, whoopsie daisy, select the one that I actually want to affect. Blur, blah 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 blur, and motion blur. And this is already set vertically to minus 90 percent, uh, 90 um, degrees on the angle with a distance of 23. You can uh, noodle around with the distance there a bit to, to your liking. So I'm going to OK that bring back in my top layer and select it this time filter blur motion 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 blur rather than minus 90 because we don't want to just copy the same one this time we're going to put in the value of 0 so we've got our vertical and horizontal all right so that now gives us the <coughs> the two flex all right okay so now what we want to do is to add um, two more layers so two darker layers and go through the exact same process. A little bit laborious, I know, but and you could set up an automated um, task to do that, but we won't because it's actually pretty quick. So, new layer. I'll go through this pretty quickly now. This one I'm going to produce uh, black. Five fill with black. Noise filter. Noise. Add noise. Exactly the same as before. There we go. Once again, all together now. Reproduce the layer is. That's right, Apple J. <laughs> and with that one, I'm going to go filter, blur, motion blur. That one is remembered the last state that I held, which was zero as the uh, as the angle and distance of 23. So I press OK to that. Turn that one off because I want to see the layer underneath. Filter, blur, motion blur back to, let's set that back to minus 90, gives us our vertical and I'm happy with that and there we go, so we've got four layers, turn the top one back on again, four layers two um, black, two white, both added noise both uh, individually have got vertical and horizontal motion blurring going on. Now to get that um, interwoven feel across the whole of the texture we're going to go through each one of our layers 
and on the fill part of our layers palette is bring down that percentage from 100 down to let's say let's say 25 okay select the next layer same again fill 25 percent and you can start to see already on my screen what's happening here same below that one again fill 25 percent on the white and then finally the last one of those four layers 25 again which brings through our base layer color of that lovely dark gray and there you have it you can see you've got that uh, lovely fleck going on there now you can get all fancy schmancy and uh, change the the uh, the color in the base here you can either add, add yourself uh, hue and saturation and colorize and, and have a play with it and something else which is um, kind of popular I've seen as web backgrounds is to let me create another layer and you get a quite Put in my brush, so I've got a nice large, and there we go, nice large <coughs> diameter on our brush, and just one hit in the middle there gives us that lovely highlight. And I'll bring the opacity on that one down to 50, say. So you get that nice subtle highlight going on right in the middle of the page there. And um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Around the edge, you've got this slight blurring, so we, remember we started at. Uh, 1440 so you could take your crop tool and go down to 1024 by 768 like that if you wanted to use your info uh, window to see that okay and you could crop that down so you get that nice crisp edge okay I'm not going to do that and uh, <clears throat> once you've grouped all your layers put all your layer uh, merge visible or flatten the image before you do that crop and then you'll end up with that with that image there. If you want the, the image to tessellate, then you can shift, hold, drag on your crop tool and create yourself a perfect cube. And then you could use that um, when you're doing your CSS in your uh, background style sheet for your web page. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. But there's your Photoshop uh, document. That's how you set it up. Pretty straightforward, done in what, less than five minutes. Okay, enjoy.